Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,976. Be prepared to be inspired. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. Today, I'm in Philadelphia with a very special guest by the name of Jeff Nowak. Jeff, welcome to Cars Yeah. Do you have it in gear, and are you ready to release the clutch? Yeah, Mark. Let's do it. All right. We're going to have some fun. Now, before I give you a proper introduction, what's one little thing that maybe most people don't know about you? Um, you know, even though I'm kind of a, a often an extrovert, I'm not exactly the loudest guy in the room, but I'm definitely in the one of the ones at the party who speaks to everyone. Uh, I'm actually pretty modest and humble and and quiet when I when I like to be. So I don't like to say that I'm you know I have to turn it on, but I I enjoy my peace and quiet and alone time, even though I might seem like a bit of an extrovert to most people. <laughs> <laughs> well, very good. Well, let me give you a proper introduction. You're you're in a very neat niche here, and that's why when we found each other, I thought I have got to have this guy on my show because I have so many past guests that could use your services, and so many listeners out there I think could use your services as well. So here we go. Jeff Nowak is the creative director at Machina Spacciale. That means special machine in Italian. He and his team form a marketing agency that works exclusively with automotive specialists. They help brokers, restoration masters, and car specialists grow their businesses through digital marketing. Their motto is, you work on beautiful cars and we'll focus on attracting the projects to your shop. I love it. Jeff knows the ins and outs of Italian classics from his little Fiat 500 to a beautiful Giulietta SS. At his business, he oversees day-to-day operations and business development. He has over 10 years of marketing experience and decided to create the business to help classic restoration shops, car brokers, and auto museums to receive more attention, the attention that they really deserve. Jeff and his team understand that automobiles represent more than just transportation. You're in the right place, Jeff. (laughs) We'll be back in just a minute, but first a word from our valued sponsor, so give them a little love and keep the seatbelts on. We'll be right back. I love Covercraft's new five-layer all-climate cover. It was developed and engineered for anything Mother Nature can throw our way. It's very soft, breathable, and easy to store and pampers your paint and interior surfaces, providing maximum UV, rain, dust, and snow protection. Add their gust guards for windy conditions for extra protection. Their five-layer all-climate cover is custom-tailored with Covercraft's attention to detail, form and fit with a quality and attention that's been their standard since 1965. Covercraft protects cars, trucks, motorcycles, RVs, trailers, And watercraft, too. Every one of my vehicles is protected by a Covercraft cover. And I have a deal for you. Use the code YA21 at Covercraft.com and you'll get 10% off your Covercraft order plus free shipping. That's right, 10% off and free shipping. Just type in the word YA, Y-E-A-H, 21 at checkout, YA21 at Covercraft.com. Covercraft, protecting the things that move you. Most people don't think about their collector car insurance until their annual premium becomes due. Well, why wait and see if there are better options for your beloved rides? I didn't. Did you know if you change carriers before your policy runs out, your insurance company has to refund you the unearned portion of your policy premium? I did my homework, I shopped around, and I found American Collectors Insurance. And that's who protects my Porsche Turbo That's right, the one I call my orange crush. They've been protecting collector vehicles since 1976. I encourage you to call my friends at American Collectors Insurance. Ask them about their agreed value policy. And if your collector vehicle is on your regular auto policy, you will be shocked at the savings, not to mention the assurance, should something bad happen to your ride, that you'll get what your vehicle is actually worth. Give them a call today for a quote at 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866 224 Nine three two four. Tell them you're a friend of Mark Green at Cars. Yeah, American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. Automotive enthusiasts just like you and me. That's American Collectors Insurance. Give them a call today. So Jeff, we are back. So let's 
dive a little deeper into the corner into this business niche that you found. I find it really, really cool and really fascinating. And you and I had a really great pre-show chat about the need for so many shops to get into the marketing side and promotion side of their business. They just don't really know how to do it. So kind of walk us through the process of how you came up with Machina Speciale and what it means to your customers. So uh, I think there was two key points that really convinced me to actually turn this into a business and not so much just a hobby helping my friends out. Uh, And the first one was there's a shop in New Jersey that works on only Ferraris. I mean, they've done work on F40s, which these days is, you know, a a million dollar car that everybody would love to have in their garage. Uh, And they've gone through and fired multiple agencies because they just don't know how to write about cars. And so they kept having, they were spending so much extra time editing the copy because these people just didn't know how to talk about an F40, Mm -hmm. right? So it wouldn't be possible to find an agency that really knew how to speak about engines and do a little bit more technical work. Uh, The next one was, I was actually the New Hope Auto Show, which I think is a pretty great show. Anyone in the tri-state area here in Pennsylvania to check out. I couldn't find a mechanic for my launchophobia. I took it to two separate shops and they both said, we'll be wasting time and money trying to figure out this engine. Then at the show, I found a guy named Neil who had a phobia. I ran over to him and I begged him, who worked on your car? So he told me the name of a man and gave me a phone number. And I called this guy, his name was Mike Christick. uh, And I'm expecting this guy to never call me back, right? It's just a name (laughs) and a phone number. But so often that's how it goes in in this world. It's just based on word of mouth. So Mike called me back, gave me another phone number to call, right? So now I'm three layers deep and all I want to do is drive my beautiful Fulvia. Yeah. And I come to find out that this guy, Mike and his son are the premier Lancia mechanics in the United States. Wow. And Mike, his father has moved over a hundred thousand individual Lancia parts. Oh my gosh. No website, no, uh, mail address, no, not even an ad in Hemix for ten dollars. Wow! And he's done all of this through word of mouth. And yeah. I was like, "That's great, but this has got to change because <laughs> yeah. those people who are a little bit younger like me, uh, I mean, I just go to Google. I mean, call me right, you know, naive, but I just think that I want those people to remain. And, and word of mouth, I don't think in the next five to ten years will be enough to rely on. Yeah, it, it's a it's a marvelous niche in my mind, and being a car guy. I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, I have friends who have car businesses and they try to find marketing people. And, you know, car people can sniff out non-car people very fast, right? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Just the wrong terminology, uh, all sorts of things. So I think it's really cool. Now, let's go back a little bit in time. If you've been a car guy your whole life, when did you realize that this was a great niche for you? So I've been a fan of, uh, you know, love it or hate it. I've been a fan of British Top Gear my entire life. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm 28 years old, so if you do the math, I was pretty much raised since a child on British Top Gear. Yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, I mean, whether or not you love or hate Jeremy Clarkson and the rest of the group, I adore the show. Uh, and that's what really got me into uh, classic cars. I mean, I've always gone to shows. I remember at 10 years old, if you can believe it, going to a show and a very vivid memory of seeing a Testarossa for $30,000. I'm sure we all love time. <laughs> yeah. And give that man cash. Yeah. <laughs> on the spot yeah. for that Testarossa. Um, so I've always been an admirer from the far, right? Going to shows. And then, of course, you know, I grew up in the garage, you know, photos of my dad and mom with their uh, Camaro, right? Mm-hmm. But they didn't hold any of those cars until I was able to drive them. So I always had to admire from afar um, until I got my hands on enough money uh, to start buying cars. And I went in a pretty big way. <laughs> Yeah, sounds like it. Well, and you're a brave man, Italian cars, which are absolutely beautiful, but sometimes have some tendencies about them, yeah. especially dive yeah. deeper into the Lancia. There's another one for you. So, yeah. I'd say so. Yeah. my As gorgeous as my Fiat 500 is um, and as fantastic as my uh, Lancia Fulvia is as well, uh, parts are not easy to come by. And, you know, where your today's service is every 5,000 miles looking at service every 500, if that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the thing with these old cars. You know, the cars are so good nowadays, and they have been for pretty good amount of time. You can just drive them and drive them and not even do anything to them. And people just assume that's the way cars are. And then when they finally are able to buy their dream car, they have no idea what they're getting into. And thus, they need to find somebody like you did, who's an expert that can help keep their car on the road so they don't do it harm, or it becomes just 
too much of a burden and they go, I'm done with this thing. It never runs right. I had an older Porsche like that, that nobody could figure out how to make it run right. And I finally found the right mechanic and he, he drove it around the block and came back. And this is after going through three mechanics. He said, throttle bodies, you need new throttle bodies. Yeah. It's a very, it's a fantastic experience when, you know, you're three mechanics in and that finally you pop the hood on that third one and they know the exact hose that's yeah. missing. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, it, it's just a very great, ex- it's a great experience. And, uh, I, I would like, I, I would really like those shops to, to reach more people, uh, more easily. Right? right. So there's not three different people involved in fixing the car. You find the first guy the first time. Absolutely. Well, let's go down this path because you touch on something. You're a younger guy. We're starting to see and have seen for a little while, but it's getting more and more prevalent, especially if you look at online um, auction type sites like Shiftgate or Bring a Trailer or, or some of the many others that are out there now that more and more young people are coming into the car hobby. And you're right, guys like you and even now guys like me, older guys, that's where we go. We go to Google, we search what we need. And if these shops are not knowing how to put themselves out there, nobody's going to find them. So let's talk about how you go about helping a shop who comes to you and says, okay, how do I put myself out there? I'm great. I know what I'm doing. Here's my specialty, but I don't know what this Facebook thing is or TikTok or Instagram. or, <laughs> And I don't even want to play yeah. in that world. I just want to work on cars. How can you help me? So how do you go about that, helping those customers that you have uh, be out there in front of people so people can find them? I mean, there are many, many ways. The, the first, absolute first step is uh, I like to physically go to the shop. So I went to one recently. I mean, I go to shop all the time. That's probably my best part of my job. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> is going to shops and, and just seeing what they, what they work on, especially if they have a car in there that I, I know I like. Mm-hmm. So really just assessing what they currently have going on and then what are their goals. Some people, although they might work on everything just to pay the bills, you know, deep down, they might want to become the premier, let's say, uh, MGB uh, MGB GT mechanic, mm-hmm. right? Maybe they just love that car. They love British roadsters and they would love to transition their business into that. When it comes to that, it's just a conversation of, you know, how do we let the world know that you are working on these cars? And not only that, you're the best at working on these cars. So it has to do a lot with uh, just assessing where they're at, assessing their goals, and then understanding how we get from from A to Z. And a lot of that is media. A lot of that is media where, you know, if you, right now you have maybe some Chevelles in the shop and some MGs, you know, maybe we spend a lot of our time, let's get more social media photos up or start a YouTube channel about specifically MGs. We're not, you know, we're still taking work with the Chevelles, but really what we're pushing to the public is the fact that we work on the MGs. And that will also let Google know that whenever someone Googles, or searches, you know, uh, MG repair or MG rims, MG parts, uh, Google will progressively over time put you in front of that search. Right. So that way people are finding you more easily. So it's a gradual process really starting with what does the shop want to achieve? I love it. It's really a needed thing. And I see it a lot. I'm active on social media and I interview so many people and I see so many people out there with, and I've interviewed them and I think, God, you've got such a great deal going here, but you're just not putting yourself out there in the right way, proper way. Uh, so people really understand who you are, or what you're doing. And it sounds like what you're doing is exactly what a lot of these, these people need. When you think about your career, since you're a car guy, I mean, you've done what the cars you have philosophy is, inspiring automotive enthusiasts. You've wrapped your life into your passion. What's the favorite part of your business that you and your team love so much? Well, I mean, the overall favorite thing is, I mean, this one's a little bit cheeky and I'll provide a second answer. But okay. really, <laughs> when, even if I'm doing something I, I don't like as much, I mean, I'm not saying I don't like proposals. I'm just saying I, I don't like to sit behind the computer that much and, and stare at a PowerPoint. At least on the PowerPoint, I'm looking at photos of cars. <laughs> exactly. <Right>? So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no matter what I'm doing. But really, my favorite thing is, is going to, to shows and just learning from people. Mm. Because, you know, that person who sets up a booth and is putting it all on the line for their detailing business or maybe for their painting business, you know, they set up that booth at a car show to have conversations. And, you know, I might I, I might be a customer because I have classic cars, but I also might be able to support their their goals and growing their business. So really just having conversations with people is the best thing because it's not always about me trying to start up business. Sometimes I'll just chat with someone because they own a Fiat 500 and we'll just talk about it and we'll connect later on about business. It's not always about that. So I like that I don't have to provide constant pressure as a sales rep. I can really actually 
create meaningful connections uh, with people I work with. Oh, it's fun to work with people that are like-minded and car people are definitely like-minded. When you think about driving inspirations for you, people who've been key mentors or influential people in your life, is there someone that stands out? Uh, yeah, there's a friend of mine. Uh, his name is uh, Henry. He is, I met him one day at a car show. You know, we just walked over and we just started talking as, as car guys do, you know, making fun of how small the engine is in the Fiat. Uh, <laughs> He pulled up in his 427 Stingray. Oh, ouch. <laughs> and, uh, right. Um, so he, he's an older gentleman, but, you know, he's been a part of the AACA, uh, the Corvette Owners Club, you know, basically every club you could possibly think of on the East Coast. Um, and he's been such a help in just meeting people. And again, that's because this business has, you know, the legacy part of it really does rely on word of mouth. Uh, I still have to do a lot of wor- word of mouth myself and work in, you know, actual physical meetings and phone calls. Mm-hmm. So, uh, he's been a big help in meeting people. And after now, I've been getting more and more people in my Rolodex. It's been easier and easier to make these connections and, and talk to people about growing their shops. Well, and the fact that you're a car guy helps tremendously is what we touched on earlier. If I had a business that could use your services, what is the first piece of advice you would offer me? No matter what kind of business I have. Uh, I would say no matter what your business really is, uh, is you want to represent yourself no matter what that is. So you need to get your work online, whether you're detailing uh, or if you're doing full concord restorations, just get your work out there online. I mean, these days it is amazing to see those ridiculous uh, influencers on TikTok that all they have is an iPhone and they might not even have the newest iPhone. So, you know, don't look at uh, a, a magazine like Petrolicious where they do, you know, Hollywood blockbuster movies of, of, repair shops that do only Alfa Romeos. Just pull out your phone and get your work online. I mean, if you just strip the paint on uh, someone's MG that they've had since, you know, their first owner, put that photo up online and tell the story of the fact that you just worked on a one owner MG. Because me, a car person, you say the word one owner and the fact that that person let you work on their car, uh, that's Says the huge. world. Yeah, It's a huge deal. So just get it out there. That's that's step one is just get it on the internet. Yeah, just try things and you'll get better and better with it as time goes on. And I think you touched on something important there. Don't try to create a blockbuster. Don't kill yourself because people become very tolerant, I will say, of all sorts of ways that they absorb information in an area they love. So if it's rough, it's shaky, I mean, make sure they can hear you, you know, <laughs> the worst thing is yeah, yeah. do it in your driveway when the wind's blowing and we can't hear a word yeah. you're saying. But Just go into the garage and yeah, film. Yeah. The, yeah. Other, the other thing I say to people is, you know, there are so many wonderful tutorials out there on YouTube. That's how I learned how to be a podcaster. I watch tutorial after tutorial on how to edit, how to record, how to put it out there, how to build my own website. Uh, there's so many tools now at your disposal. And the other thing I've said to people is look at what other people are doing in your world and pick and choose the best parts of what they're doing and somewhat emulate them, but use your own style. Of course, you don't want to copy them, but I learned that from Tony Robbins. Believe it or not, the great Tony Robbins was, yeah. a, he was yeah. a client of mine back when I was in my mid twenties Oh, fantastic! working in advertising. I met him on a beach. I was coming out of the ocean after a surf <laughs> session in the morning and he was running down the beach. And if you've ever met Tony Robbins, he's a giant person. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And his head is too big for his body because of a pituitary. <laughs> it is. He had a, a problem when he was a teenager with his pituitary glands and he grew super fast. But, you know, he told me something really valuable way back when we were trying to create new marketing proposals for him or packages for him when he was doing his cassette tape series on personal power. And he goes, no, 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 no. He goes, just do it like this. I said, well, that's the way you've always done it and the way everybody does it. He goes, don't reinvent the wheel. Just put my face on it and get it out there. I just got to get it out there. And that's always stuck in my mind. Being a creative person, it kind of bothers you because you want it to be special. But uh, yeah. just get it. You just said it yourself, Jeff. Just get it out there, right? Yeah, I think there's a great, uh, a really, I'm not sure what exactly they're trying to do, but someone who's doing it very well in terms of, you know, amateur but successful uh, is an Instagram that's uh, called Unobtainium. Uh, they have, I think, the largest collection of spare parts and bodies for 356s mm-hmm. for the Porsches. And their photos are just, you know, he'll put out a photo of uh, a rusted out, parted out uh, in the snow, 356B, and it's not a great photo, but it people love it because in the comments, you have all these 356 enthusiasts that some are freaking out the fact that he has this body and they want to <laughs> buy it. Yeah. But some are just like, uh, you know, starting discussions with each other about the history of the 356. And it's all because he went outside 
and took a photo. And the, the fact the car did everything for him. You know, it's he didn't dust off the snow, right? He just left it as it was and put it up online. It's authentic. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. I love it. Let's take a short break. We come back. I want to talk about a challenge. So keep that thought in mind and we'll be right back. Did you know that Cars Yeah is in the top 1% of all podcasts based on listenership, according to Libsyn, the premier RSS feed for podcasts in the United States? That's right. And Cars Yeah is the only five-day-a-week automotive-focused podcast for you to get your message into the ears of thousands of listeners daily from all over the world. Plus, DuPont Registry recommended Cars Yeah is one of their top 10 car podcasts for you to enjoy. Cars yeah has experienced tremendous growth, plus your ads are evergreen, meaning they never go away. And more and more listeners find Cars yeah every day for their daily dose of automotive inspiration. Do you want to expose your brand to a highly targeted list of automotive enthusiasts in a very unique and very personal way? Well, I can help you. Contact me, Mark Green, at mark at carsyeah.com or through the website at carsyeah.com today to learn more. I've discovered Linkage. It's a new quarterly publication and website that covers the automotive market, driving, restoring, collecting, and discovering your passion for motor vehicles. Linkage is about experiences, opinions, and values. Linkage is an actual informed, reasoned opinion based on first-hand experiences. A talented Linkage team covers the automotive world, the people who share your passion and mine, smart, considered, rational, and experienced opinions, ones you can learn from and grow. That includes our passion that drives auctions and the collector car market. So come with me and join us on this journey. And be sure to use the code CARSYEAH when you subscribe, and they'll give you $10 off. Boom! Linkage, geared for the automotive life. Subscribe today at LinkageMag.com. So, Jeff, let's talk about this. Now, this could be a huge challenge that you face, maybe even a big failure, or a reoccurring challenge you see your customers face. It doesn't really matter, but more importantly is what? how did this challenge teach you or someone else a really valuable lesson so they could come out of it in a positive way? So uh, I thought about this question, and... Uh, there's a little bit of a, a joke, a joke answer that I have, and one is uh, when I started importing cars from Italy, I originally thought I could flip them, and I don't even really like the word flip. Then, you know, the first car arrived in the trailer at my house, I drove it, and I realized that it's impossible. I'm not, I, I failed this business immediately because once I drove them, I fell in love. Oh, I like, yeah. <laughs> I am never, <laughs> never going to sell these cars, <laughs> right? Unless, you know, I, I have to or eventually I, I tire of them, which I don't think I will. So yeah. there's a failure there is that, you know, if you think you're going to drive the car and then sell it, you have to admit that you're going to fall in love with it. I don't care what it is. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've had so many people on the show that sell beautiful cars. And I always think, how can you let these things go? But as they've said, well, that's my business. If I don't, I don't have any income. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. but yeah, if you, especially if they're special cars and, and high end special cars. But the fact is, they at least get to be around them. So you found, you just found a different way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was just, it was just a, a humbling experience that I, I, I didn't see coming, but it's uh, <laughs> one I don't regret. Amore, yeah, that Italian love for those Italian cars. Yeah. They are beautiful, <laughs> that's for sure. In fact, today I'm wearing my Alfa Romeo sweatshirt just for you, so uh, Fantastic. There, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> when, you look, when you look ahead at your business in the next, let's just say, two to three years, because, boy, given what we've been through the last two years, you never know what's going to get thrown in your face. What, what's a bucket list uh, thing you'd like to accomplish with your business or, or in your life? Um, I would say that, you know, I, I am a pretty modest guy. So even though I want to grow this business very quickly and very big to help a lot of people, uh, really, I think just a personal goal, regardless of how, you know, how far we make it and how many people join my team. Uh, for me personally, I really just want to attend every major concord on a regular basis and, and just run into familiar faces while I'm there. Nice. So I, I don't want to always be the star of the show. But, you know, I'd love to walk by this gorgeous 1930s Rolls Royce, shake hands with the owner, you know, who I, I recognize his face and he recognizes mine. And we go about our day. Just kind of being a, among that community that leads the way in cars that teenagers uh, and even people who are of age idolize. 
Yeah, that sounds like fun to me. Yeah. Let's talk about a special vehicle in your life. Now, you've touched on a few cars, your uh, Fiat, uh, Lancia. Is there one special car that really stands out for you? And, and tell us a story about that ride. Yeah, so uh, I'm fortunate enough to that I, I went to university with a few people who were actually Italian, like, you know, came to the States and we became good friends. And so whenever I go there, I, I normally stay with them on their farm. It sounds more glamorous than it is. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds good. Yeah, I like yeah. it. <laughs> go go and pick some uh, tomatoes for your uh, salad. <laughs> yeah, they grow olives and uh, 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 the the fruits off cactus. Oh, but um, whenever I go there, he he picks me up in his uh, Fiat Panda, and I'm not sure if anyone knows this car, but it is it's basically the the Honda Civic of the Italian people. You know, there are a yeah. million of them. Their parts are so easy to find, uh, but just the way that the Italian people use this car, uh, it, it shows to me that there's so much more to car culture than just handling curves and going fast. Uh, you know, this car is handed down through through generations and they'll do anything to keep it in the family. Not because it's like sentimental value, it's just because they they need it as A to B transport. And so when we squeeze in to this tiny little Fiat Panda, uh, it, it makes me really, it, it makes me understand that cars are actually uh, really part of a culture, not just car culture where we meet up with cars and coffee, but part of the Italian culture really is this Fiat Panda. So even though I get squeezed into the back with a whole bunch of stuff that shouldn't be there, uh, I love it. I absolutely adore the Panda, and I can't wait to have one of my own, uh, <laughs> particularly a 4x4. 4 4x4. 4. 4 4. Now, they started making that car back in 1980, I think. Yeah, yeah, the four x four Panda. It is. Uh, it's a brute. It it'll it'll do all the things a Jeep will, um, but it doesn't quite have the ground clearance. <laughs> yeah, not quite. Well, it'll get you through the snow in a pinch. So it will. It's so light. It's got an adoring name too. So you know who doesn't love a Panda? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So I'm going to be your car psychologist Nate. Now, since you work in marketing, this could be interesting. If you were manifest as a vehicle, now this isn't what you want to be. This is how you perceive yourself. What would Jeff be, but more importantly, why? Okay, so I, I did think about this one a little bit, and I have to start with what the actual car is. And I got to be honest, you know, on a public setting like this, I don't know how comfortable I am sharing the car <laughs> because I don't want the value to go up. Go for it. But uh, I think the car that I would be manifest as is a 1961 Fiat 2300S Coupe. Ooh, now, okay. the reason I say that is because it's an obtainable car. It's still under... $50,000, but it's from that era where it is the epitome of class, style, and engineering. So you look at this car and you write it off because of the Fiat badge. But if you look into the history of the car, the engines weren't built by Fiat. They were built by Ferrari. Right. Then all the entire underneath of the car, the transmission was developed by Abarth. So, you know, there's racing pedigree. Then it was even styled by Ghia who was up there competing with Pininfarina for the best designers of all time. Yeah. So it's not in the spotlight, spotlight like a DB5 that is a million dollars. Yeah. But honestly, I personally think it outshines a lot of the cars from that era that go for way more money. Okay. Well, yeah, so, that was yeah. Uh, designed by uh, Sergio Sartorelli, I believe. If it, I got yeah. his name right, Aguia. Yeah. You know, that's one of those cars that when you see it, you take a double look at it. You kind of go, wait, what is that? Especially yep. over here in the States. You know, there's another one. Is it the Fiat, the Gia Fiat, I think they called it, the G230S? It was mm -hmm. based on the 2300S, which is even a bit more sexy and, and cool. Am I, yeah. am I thinking of the right car? Um, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, that car, uh, I saw one. Where did I see it? Somewhere in a picture. It was a beautiful metallic green color. Wire wheels. And the engine on that thing is set way back. Way back in the engine compartment. It's kind of interesting. Not unlike uh, Bizzarini. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep, yeah, I know. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. Well, you better buy one now because uh, now that we've let yeah, the, cat, I know. the cat out of the bag, the prices yeah. are going to start to, so, to go up. I mean, it's, it's modest, but it, it really is a heavy hitter because I, I just think that, you know, if you saw one on the track at one of those Goodwood Revival events where it's up against, you know, $100,000 E-types or even million-dollar DBs, yeah. uh, I, it, just, it just blends in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, it, you know, it isn't getting the attention that I, I think it deserves, but that for selfish reasons, I hope it doesn't. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to remember, when, when did Fiat acquire Ferrari? 
trying to, I don't remember the year that happened. I, I know that if you think of the movie uh, Ford versus Ferrari, that era of the it was the 60s I want to say 60 yeah 64 65 definitely mid 60s yeah yeah when that whole deal came through and you know old mr ford kind of got slapped in the face by <laughs> mr yeah. ferrari like no 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 you're not gonna buy my business i'm gonna sell it to my friends here in italy uh so that's very interesting they had those collaborations going on uh at that time in 61 i'd forgotten all about that car so wow very cool yeah it is i mean it's one of those ones when uh, I'll just go through listings on uh, uh, pro- classified listings on uh, a few Italian websites, kind of like Auto Trader, but in Italy. And I just like uh, soon, soon I will, soon I will have you here. <laughs> <laughs> soon you will be mine. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk. You know, I want to talk a little bit about how you like to give back to people in the automotive sector. Now you do it in a big way with your business as a whole. You figured out ways to help people be more successful. Yeah, uh, more than just that. I mean, I. W- w- I, I mean, I reach out to a lot of people, and when I realize someone is kind of just getting their footing, like maybe it's one guy who took his hobby, you know, and put a branding on it. Uh, I, I honestly don't expect those people to, you know, have a large advertising budget, and so I'm more than happy to have a few phone calls that are just totally for free. I even have a few website templates that I give out for free, where if someone doesn't really know what they're doing, you know, here at least the template you can just drag and drop your photos in. So I really. I want to see someone get to the point where they can come back to me and be like, hey, you know, now we're ready to take on a few concourse cars and, and take over the world uh, starting from zero. I think it's, um, a, it's a great approach. I've done other people have done that have helped me. And eventually when I'm ready to hire somebody, they're the first ones I go back to because of the time they gave me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's just an easy way to start a good relationship. And of course, uh, you know, I always volunteer at car shows if they need me. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a great way just to see the show and, and meet more people. So, you know, if you need someone help directing traffic or, uh, you know, you need some help with graphic design for maybe the advertisement. Uh, yeah, I, I try to help out shows where I can for free just Love to it. give back because yeah. uh, those shows those shows are a big part of what we do. And I really think it's I would it would hate to see them go away. Oh, absolutely. So let's talk about a great book you'd like to share. Is there one you've read that uh, you think others should crack open and enjoy? So I, I'm not sure if most people give a, a car book here, but I, I'm going to give one that if you know if you're looking to maybe you you know work in marketing at a at a, uh, a shop and they're lucky enough to have a marketing department and you kind of want to get better at writing ads. Uh, the most influential book in my life for writing copy and writing ads that are effective uh, is a book called Breakthrough Advertising by Eugene Schwartz. Mm-hmm. Uh, the book is actually from I believe the late '60s, but the lessons are eternal. Uh, it's one that I go back to. Uh, over and over and over. So uh, Breakthrough Advertising is absolutely fantastic. Great book. I'll remind our listeners there's a great place on the Cars Yeah website called Guest Recommended Books where this book will be listed. There's over 2,000 books there now for you to, to go and check out. There are car books, there's self-help books, business books, all sorts of great books recommended there. And I made it really easy for you to buy with a quick click. So I'm going to take you on the ultimate drive here today, Jeff. I uh, I have an unlimited checking account, which is kind of cool for my guests here. <laughs> great. That means yeah. you get to pick any vehicle in the world. You get to pick anybody to be with, living or deceased. And you get to go anywhere you want with this person. So what does that yep. ultimate drive look like for you? Uh, the first thing is I'd have two cars because, you know, <laughs> okay. the person that I'm going to say, it wouldn't be any fun unless we were kind of competing on oh, the back I, I get it. Okay. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> so I, I'd, I'd probably go with John Surtees just because uh, for those people who know John Surtees, uh, he was one of, the, one of the premier racing drivers in the romantic era of racing. So... 50s, 60s, and 70s. He drove for Ferrari in the 50s and 60s. So, you know, although we have this blockbuster movie of Ford versus Ferrari, uh, I can't imagine how many more blockbuster stories he's lived through. Yes. Whether it's like, because I mean, I, I love that more and more movies are coming out about uh, driving thanks to the popularity of F1. So, you know, if they're going to do historical research, this is the guy to talk to about these rivalries because he was there and he was winning. Yes. Great guy. I would love to put him. I don't know if he, these days, I don't know if he'd be okay driving these cars because the hard suspension. Uh, I would probably have to put him in an uh, Elantra 037, which is the Series B rally uh, winning championship car. Oh, my. Again. <laughs> yeah. It's the car that beat Audi with rear wheel drive when Audi had all wheel drive. Yeah. And then I, I'd have to drive a Stratos, which if you've ever seen a Elantra Stratos is the most ridiculous looking car. Uh, the short wheelbase and all that power. <laughs> oh, they're insane. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. 
you know, I hear they're actually, you know, as much as you'd love to own one, I hear they're terrible to drive. It's just too <laughs> stiff. Yeah, probably. The gears are too short. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, two wonderful cars, an incredible, iconic individual. Put you guys on some fun mountain roads, and I think that would be a pretty cool ultimate drive. Very unique answer to that question. I think you're the first person that answered it in that way which is kind of fun is well i mean if you have a racing driver you're not going to drive i mean he's going to have either force himself to drive or you got to drive against him right yeah he's not going <laughs> to sit he's not going to sit in the right seat or the left depending on what country you're in and the age of the car you know you've taken us on a fun ride here today jeff and i want to thank you for sharing your business cuz i think it's really needed in the automotive sector before i let you go could you share some uh, parting words of wisdom uh, inspiration a success quote perhaps yeah i would say right now that too often are the uh, the millionaire collectors and the million dollar car sales in the spotlight. I mean, it, it, yes, it's very cool to see a, a $10 million car change hands and then learn about the person who has the money to buy that car through these luxury auctions in California. But I, I really think that the restoration shops need to spend more time flaunting their work because uh, without them, you know, that $80 million GTO wouldn't be running and no one would show <laughs> up to concourse in their million dollar goal way. There are people behind those cars that are the reason we get to appreciate them. And I just hope that, I mean, I've heard people say there is a lack of mechanics and uh, I will do everything in my power to make this lifestyle more attractive and grow those businesses so they continue to have success. Absolutely, I love it. How can people learn more about your business? Uh, just check out our website. Uh, I'm sure in the show notes here, you know, we'll put my email and you can always yes. reach out to me directly. I'm very personable, you know, send me an email, hey, what's up, or ask me a series of questions, whatever you'd like. Uh, but our website is uh, macchinaspeciale.com. I know it's in Italian, which maybe wasn't a good choice. <laughs> so we'll link it in the show, no show notes and you can just skip the typing and, and do some clicking. It's very easy to find. And you're, yeah, by the way, your website is very cool. It has a awesome, cool vibe to it. Uh, having worked in the advertising graphic design world, I, but I brought a big smile on my face when I logged into your website, Jeff. So nice job. Yeah, British Racing Green. Uh, <laughs> I would choose to have all my cars that color, and I think everyone should do the same. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know about that. I don't think I'm going to change my orange crush to green, but <laughs> I'll tell you something. Green has – it's one of those colors that has not really been – out there in the forefront of a lot of vehicles for a long time, but it's coming back. I'm seeing more and more. Uh, I've even part of a Facebook group that just focuses on green colored cars, which is kind of <laughs> is kind of fun. And uh, I like green cars. My first new car was a first gen Scirocco, '79 Scirocco that was metallic, oh, okay. metallic yeah. green. Uh, I put those gold basket weave BBS wheels on it right away, of course, because that's <laughs> what you do when you're a teenager. Yeah. You, you buy a car, but uh, uh, I love it too. Yeah, British racing. Green green classic. Jeff, thank you for being so generous today with your time and your expertise and for sharing your business with us. Oh, so needed in the automotive sector. I think there's going to be some listeners out there that are going to be very excited to learn about you. Until you and I talk again, my friend, not only will I see you down the road, but hey, the new year's coming. Happy new year to you. Yes, thank you. You too. Absolutely. Thank you. How did you discover your path to a fulfilling life? Too many young people flounder in finding an education and a career that fits. But for those who have a passion for cars, trucks, and motorcycles, and who love working with their hands, problem solving, and fixing things, a career as a professional auto technician is incredibly rewarding. Cars yeah is pleased to team up with Tech Force Foundation, our charity of choice in bringing scholarships technical education, and hands-on experience to young people so they can discover a possible future. Join me and lend your support by visiting techforce.org today. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah! Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up! a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah!